evening. Passion is one of the most beautiful forces in the universe. Passion should be a never dying fashion. I adore passion. The passion is the glory. believe passion is dangerous. Some believe passion is unhealthy. These people say you get too addicted, too absorbed in something, you are not doing it right. To me, this is completely wrong. Although you certainly can be obsessed, you certainly can do passion wrong. Passion is necessary for a fulfilling existence. You can be passionate about people. Some people are so wonderful, you feel compelled to extol their virtues. These people can be intimate acquaintances, platonic or romantic. Sometimes people are so awesome, you can't help yourself. The individual may be a current prominent person who you admire. The individual may be someone historical. You can praise people for many reasons. You can also praise a group of people, a category of people. For example, military, teachers, as one audio tape did, single mothers, as one musician did, plus virtually any other group that has done something phenomenal. One should be passionate about art. I have long had the creative itch. Creativity has been with me pretty much my whole existence. From my early days on, I have been creative. L. Ron Hubbard said the greatest joy there is in life is creating. Splurge on it. He didn't say be stingy. He said splurge on creativity. It's a wonderful, hot, a glorious sensation. It is marvelous to combine two of my elements that already exist into something new. Many other people make contributions to society. Creative individuals through their passion are perhaps even more noble because they are making an original contribution. Doing something that not everyone can do. Each of us have our unique personalities, our unique point of views. Therefore, all of us could probably create art. The type of art I've engaged in the most is right, as you may notice, when I use the term art, I use it very broadly. I don't limit art to what many people typically just think of as art. Art is a very broad, expansive category. writing I have done has included short stories, journals, poetry,
poetry, satire, essays, leaflets, humor, plus so much more. Each type of writing to me has a different essence, a different vibe. It makes it appropriate for different purposes. My writing really started to develop when I was about a senior in high school. Ever since then, I've been writing fun. In college, I developed another art form, public speaking. Many people don't consider public speaking to be an art. Many people view it simply as a way to communicate or to convey information. It certainly is used for these purposes, but a passionate person sees something more there. A passionate person realizes how something powerful like public speaking is truly an art. This is why I try to put lots of effort into the public speeches I give. I try to practice my lectures a lot before I give them. I also try to put forth innovative topics with innovative ways of presenting them, sharing stories, putting forth ideas that may not otherwise be put forth. When you're passionate about art, you realize there's two main aspects about art. Creating and performing, both to me, are vital. Unfortunately, this is divided amongst several people. I believe it's more powerful when one individual takes control of both. Many politicians have ghostwriters writing their speeches. These politicians just perform the speeches. They don't actually write them. To me, this is an utter injustice, a great tragedy. I'm not nearly as important in society's eyes as they are, but at least I can write my own speeches. What does that say about them? Politicians should be more than actors. Anyone can stand up there, look good, read off some lines. It takes true passion to create those lines in the first place. Leaders should be creating the vision, not speech writers. A passionate person can even make activities which seem utterly banal into art forms. One example of me doing this was with student government. Student government is art form? That sounds odd. When I was in student government, at the beginning of each meeting, we had a formality which is pretty pointless. It involved approving the minutes in the agenda. It was usually cut and dried. Someone said motion to approve. Someone said second. The chair said any discussion? No. Then everyone votes. Everyone approves it. If there was discussion, it was usually pre banal Maybe someone would say our speaker has to leave at 7 tonight, therefore, can we move the speaker from 7.30 to 6.30 so the speaker can get out in time?
I didn't say, I wanted to spice it up. Because what I did was instead of saying banal, speaking to my emotions to approve, I would say something exciting such as, if we don't approve the minutes today, may all your Kool-Aid be boiling hot. We don't approve the agenda today, incredible hope. It's going to come after you. We don't approve the agenda. We should approve the agenda because the status quo says it's right, and the status quo is always right. I made something pretty dull. It is something fun. At the end of student government, everyone realized how fun approving the minutes and the agenda could be. When you have the poetic mind, you are able to do this. I have a passion for physical fitness, specifically the sport of running. I begin running simply as a way to lose weight, to stay in shape, maybe. Two, as I continue to run, I realized there was so much more. There was other dimensions to running. I was introduced to the competitive running. Therefore, I saw in addition to staying in shape, losing weight, you can create a whole social world whole pastime out of this exercise. George Sheehan, I believe is how you pronounce his name, a famous running writer, elevated running far as high as one could. He philosophically reflected upon running, poetically described it, raised it as a source of spirituality. Many running writers describe the technical aspects of running. The right shoes, how to train, what to eat, where to run. This interest, George Sheehan, but he knew there was something more. He knew running was so great, you should be passionate about it. When you're passionate about it, you care more than just the right shoes to run with. Runner's World today shows his passion not only by covering the technical aspects, but also with columns such as the Penguin Chronicles. In the Penguin Chron Chronicles, the writer of the column describes what it's like for someone at the back of the pack to run. People who are at the back of the pack may become inspired by this article. There's another column, the finish line, where other writers reflect about their great running experiences. Maybe someone describes running with their mother, describes running with kids, plus other great running experiences. There's one column called the Human Race, where altruistic runners are profiled and featured. If someone runs for a great cause, runs across the United States for some purpose, if someone helps people through running, that's profiled in there. It's great when running expands. Physical movement is naturally graceful. The poetic mind sees this gracefulness and praises it. Whatever your interest in physical fitness is, you too can be passionate about that. I am passionate about 
the revolution. The revolution of which I speak is Federation without television, the autonomy party. One reason I'm so passionate about these, this revolution is because it wholeheartedly supports what I believe in. Also, I played a role in creating it. As I said earlier, it is wonderful to create poetry in public speech. It's even more wonderful, perhaps, to create an organization to give that your creative life essence. To me, these organizations continuously promote original, visionary, inventive ideas. Many people are passionate about activism, such as Kuwait. To me, if you want to change the world, you need to look all over the place, find the best ideas, make a synthesis of the good ideas. That is true inventiveness to me. Many people are stuck in their activist ruts. Unfortunately, many of the leaders today, which other people exalt endlessly, are little more than mediocre, if any more than mediocre at all. The two main political parties do not allow visionaries, inventors, mavericks, individuals to accelerate in the ranks. George W. Bush and John Kerry, the two nominees of these parties, didn't get where they were for being bold visionaries, mavericks, or individuals. They got where they were for towing the party line, for being conformists, for being mediocre. There's something wrong when we are elevating mediocrity. Albert Einstein said great spirits will always be persecuted by a mediocre mind. This is why truly great ones seem to be put down. This is perhaps why the great ones do not rise. To me, if you're going to be a leader, you should have some type of original thinking. Having the same party platform over and over to me is not worthy of leadership. So many people accelerate in so many institutions by not bettering the institution, merely reaffirming everything the institution has ever done. We need mavericks. Folks call John McCain a maverick because he thinks for himself. Although it's very important to think for yourself, that alone should make you a maverick. If he votes on five issues different from his Republican colleagues, to me that doesn't make him a maverick. If he was such a maverick, he would leave the Republican Party altogether. True mavericks are bolder than he is. John McCain really doesn't have too many original ideas. Doesn't have that superb vision which truly makes leaders. As others before may have known. He instead is called a maverick because people are so used to utter conformance. One of my favorite pastimes is to read books, other literature, provide me with endless hours of enjoyment it seems. I love books on a variety of topics. I have read books all over the Dewey Decimal System. I have read books 
My computers, trivia, philosophy, religion, life and death, sexuality, health, social issues, sociology, history, fitness, nutrition, crime, politics, technology, radio, television, science, astrology, geography, poetry, biographies, travel, and geography, to name some. Since books are so great, institutions with house books are worth being passionate about. The Autonomy Party is very passionate about wondrous libraries. We believe more and more should be built. In fact, one of our slogans is build libraries, shut down taverns. We believe instead of building more taverns, we should build specialized libraries. Also building general libraries. Specialized libraries concentrate on specific topics. We could have specialized libraries about football, World War II, nonprofit organizations. Dentistry. Plus whatever else suits your fancy. Unfortunately, sometimes you hear libraries being shut. Even in this area, I believe there's a library that's going to be shut down. Jim Hightower, in one of his books, said, don't believe the leaders who tell you because of dire economic times we need to shut down libraries. He said, during the Great Depression, not a single library was closed. Certainly we are nowhere near the Great Depression, even if the economic times are not the most favorable. What's great about being in the metropolitan area is access to so many different libraries. There's dozens of libraries in the metropolitan area. If you have a card in one library, you can get access to the whole Twin Cities metropolitan area. For example, my home library, Oakdale, gives me access to Washington County. I also have my card activated in Maplewood. This gives me access to Ramsey County. I've had my card activated in St. Paul. I have access to St. Paul Public Library. Even recently, had access to Minneapolis Public Library. It's great to go to different libraries. When you go to one library, you see the same books over and over, therefore it's nice to see some more variety. With the Twin Cities setup, variety is almost endless. What is wonderful about reading is it's very difficult to tire of reading. Certainly you get tired of reading of certain topics, but to tire of reading in general is nearly impossible. Hobbies are a wonderful way to spend your time. When you come home from work, to engage in hobbies gives you a great diversion great way to think about something different than work. Some people say, I'm bored. There's nothing to do. I believe resourcefulness demands we avoid boredom. I do not let myself succumb to boredom. I cannot say I'm in a state of boredom. 
to me there's so much to do so little time boredom is not a viable option certainly there's times where there's less stimulation than others but to say you're bored is to admit soul defeat do not let yourself be bored be strong enough to resist boredom the hobbies people participate in are extremely vast. Hobbies can be hockey, nitty, point collecting, historical reenactment, model airplane, fantasy football, computer games, card games, board games, skydiving, bungee jumping, any sports, plus ever so much more. One of the great ways to be passionate is to be passionate about life. The MOVE organization, in an activist way, constantly says, it supports life, fights for life. That is the way to be. There's a point of view called consistent life ethic, where people truly passionate about life embrace. I don't know who coined the term or who first put forth the philosophy. I believe it is one of the best philosophies out there. This consistent life ethic philosophy demands that you support life on every issue across the board. You are against euthanasia, against capital punishment, against abortion, against unjust war, plus every other issue of life. This is where I try to put myself in favor of life on every issue. Not in necessarily a completely absolute sense, but as consistently as possible. I hope one day instead of left and right being the major political dynamic, life and death become the major political dynamic. I hope the idea of consistent life ethic is advanced to a very high level. In addition to fighting for life, you can be passionate by how you live life. If you live life to the fullest, you are inspiring others with your passion. A prime example of this is exemplified in the film Dead Poets Society. One instructor was very passionate about existence. He was hired to teach a very orthodox, rigid, a traditionalist institution. This instructor was very unorthodox, a maverick, open. He was everything the institution was not. Thus a clash was inevitable. He, using the poetic point of view, encouraged students to value life and to live it to the fullest. One point in the film, he brings the students to a picture of past students. He says, one day they were here just like you. He said, now they're becoming food for worms. He says, that is why you must seize the day. He says, because you'll be food for worms one day, you need to take advantage of every moment. His teaching style was way out of the ordinary. The administration was shocked. Eventually it was offended. Eventually decided it had to climb down. He decided he wanted to remove this instructor. But the students were incredibly inspired. The students 
decided to defy the administration. The students took the stand of getting up on top of their desks to show their support for this instructor, even though the administration was making threats. At first, a couple of students right away knew what they were going to do. Then, more and more started to stand up until pretty much the whole class was standing up besides one or two. Even some students you may not have thought would have stood up did. They were that inspired. When a person is passionate, that person inspires wonderfully. Was this dead poet society story just a film? Not exactly, because something very similar to that happened in real life. At MSU Mankato, where I got my master's degree, there was an aviation professor who wanted to help the students out. Aviation students have to do lots of flying. This costs lots of money. Getting airplanes off the ground is no cheap endeavor. The flight school costs were very burdensome to students. He wanted to help students out in his own time by charging them much less to teach them how to fly. Literally, perhaps metaphorically too. Unfortunately, the administration didn't like this. The administration wanted him to go through that flight school. The administration fired him. I'm not an expert on what happened with this story. I just know the little I heard. But what I do know this is what I saw. After he got fired, there was tremendous uproar amongst the aviation students. These students went onto the sidewalks to pick it. They demanded the administration hold meetings to reconsider its action. When these meetings were held, halls were filled. Eventually, an arbitrator decided the university was fine firing him. To me, he must have been so wonderful for students to go to such length. I bet most of these students would never have picketed before. But he was so wonderful when he was taken away. People were willing to do something they may have never ever considered before. That is beautiful. When you think about your best teachers, usually those who are passionate, those who are original, innovative, Many teachers are great people, in fact, I would probably say most people who go in the profession have good intentions. Being a good person alone is not enough to be inspirational. You have to teach people how to think. You have to inspire them to be excellent. You have to be innovative. You have to be visionary, in fact. When I look back at my best teachers, they are those who were willing to be innovative, often those who relegated grades, something usually considered the utmost importance to be far less important. These instructors said real learning is more important than grades. Some of these instructors were so great, you would look forward to attending. You wouldn't merely tolerate or put up with a class, as you may often do with even the best of them. Class was a very enriching experience. You learned a lot in these classes. You couldn't help but learn a lot. You're structured that way. 
these T2000 are far more effective than rigidly confining oneself to curriculum. When someone has passion like that, it can really show. Passion is beautiful. Passion is glorious. Passion is marvelous. Let us raise and exalt passion. Long live passion. Good evening.